So let's go over the controls for AND, OR, and BICONDITIONAL in Logic 2010. Okay. Do some examples that we did in class, but in Logic 2010. So showing Q and not T, we've got uh, premise 2, premise 3, most tollens, uh, we've got our not t, and then uh, we use premise two and premise one modus tollendo ponens. There's nothing, there's no trick about modus tollendo ponens, it's just whenever you have the negation of one half, you get the other half. And we've got two line three, we're going to adjoin these, a, d, j. When you say ADJ, it gives you this pop-up. You have to decide which order that you want it in. So in this case, I want it in the order of Q and not T. So I click on this button, Q and not T, say OK. And there we've got our direct derivation. So that was just showing you modus tollendo ponens, which is just exactly like modus tollens and modus ponens, and then a join. OK, let's do another and see a few more. Conclusion. Now, uh, in this case, we're going to show a conditional. So we're going to show both halves of the biconditional. We're going to first show if P, then this thing, and then this thing, and then P. So two ways you could do this. You can always just write your own show line. So when I wrote show conclusion here, this was really just a shortcut. I'm going to delete this using Alt, Delete, Hold, Alt, and press Delete. I'll just delete these lines to show you. So all along, I could have done the following. I could have written out show p. In this case, I'm going to use biconditional. So I can I can type that in by pressing uh, right click, and then it gives me this drop down menu. I can just sort of uh, like press these buttons. Or if I know the sh keyboard shortcuts for the conditionals, I can just type it in here. So show p and Control Shift B gives me by conditional bracket not Q. Control Shift A for and gives me the con uh, conjunction. So I could have all along been showing these things by typing them in the left hand column, but uh, by just using the shortcuts show conclusion, it, it types it out for me. So it knows what the conclusion is and it just automatically generates it. So I don't have to type it out manually. So Similarly, when I'm doing these show lines, I can say show P, then Q, and R, and that'll give me a show line. Oh, pardon me. I could have said show this thing, right? And that'll give me my show line that I can then say assume for conditional der derivation and so on, or in addition to knowing show conclusion, it knows a few others. So that's this one. If I, if I right click on this box, it gives me this drop down menu. There's a few options here. So show conclusion is the one I've been using. Using uh, Show consequent is good for after you started a conditional derivation. Show antecedent. Show the unnegated. Show negated consequent. In this case, the one I want is show conjunct or sorry, so show conditional. Uh, in this case, I want to show the conditional that's going to make up that by conditional. So I can click on that and then it'll ask me which way I want. I want this way. Right? Uh, if you didn't do it in the drop down menu, if you prefer to type it out, you can just say, so delete this. Alt delete deletes your lines. I could just say show cond. It'll do the same drop down menu show conditional. So uh, these show conclusion, show con, con, show cons are just ways of getting Logic 2010 to generate the relevant show lines without you having to type them out. But you can always type them out if you prefer. If there's not a shortcut for what you want, you can just go into this left hand line and write your own show line. Okay, so where were we? We were going to show Q and not R. So we're going to do premise one by conditional to conditional. Again, it gives us a, a drop down line. Do it one way, premise one by conditional to conditional. Do it the other way. Uh, 
now we can do premise three, double negation, uh, line five, minus tollens to give us not Q. So now we've got not Q, which is one half of what we're looking for. And we can say line seven, premise two, minus ponens to get the other half. And now we can use line seven and line eight and adjoin them to get the thing we were trying to show. Once again, order matters. So, and logic, we haven't told logic 2010 which order we want these adjoined in. So we have to pick, do we want R and not Q or in this case we want Q and R or not Q and R. And then on line nine, we've done our direct derivation which means on line four, we've done our conditional derivation. Okay, so now we've shown one half of this biconditional. Now we want to show the other half. And the easiest way, for my, for my money, the easiest way is once again to write show consequent, sorry, show conditional, and just show the other way. And now we're just gonna show the other half. Same for conditional derivation show the consequence, assume for indirect derivation, uh, premise one, by conditional to conditional. In this case, what the one I want is probably, uh, if not P then Q. You can do both if you just want to be complete. Okay. Now we've got 15, 16 most ponens, we've got Q, so 13 simplify. Right, so the simplify command. So on line 13, we're gonna simplify. And once again, we get a drop down menu. If you don't see it, it's probably down off the bottom of the page. In this case, it wants to know on which side do we want to simplify? So I want the not Q, and that'll generate our uh, in uh, indirect derivation by producing a con uh, contradiction. If we didn't write S, if instead we writ had written, delete these lines, if instead we'd written line 13 simplify left, it would have just known that we wanted not Q. If we'd written simplify right, we'd given us not R. But what we wanted was 18, 19 indirect derivation, 14 conditional derivation and now we have the two halves of our biconditional we've got line 12 and line 2 we've got the thing that we were looking for so 12 and 2 we want a conditional to a biconditional and once again it's going to ask us to choose the order that we want things in and we want the order that we were trying to show in the first place so p biconditional Q and R, and line 23, we've done a direct derivation. There's one more I'd like to show you, and I wanna show you it using uh, a command that I haven't sort of demonstrated in class before, which is that you can write your own problems. So if I click on user, uh, then it asks me to generate my own problem, which is, uh, you know, useful if you want to try things out. If you want to explore logic, uh, you can you can do this. So, give myself the premise of P, and I want to show Control Shift T for therefore P or something. Control Shift O or let's say not Q then X or something. Okay, and now I can play with my own problem here. So, uh, same controls as always, show the conclusion. In this case, we're, I'm, I wanna show you the uh, add function. So I wanna say uh, premise one, add, and the following dropdown will come down. So something or P or P and something. In this case, the conclusion I want is P or something. So click on this, okay. And now it wants me to type in what it is I want. So one easy way of doing this is pressing right click and it'll give you this drop down menu and you can just type it out on this virtual keyboard or X. Right. Click 
close this. And then it'll give me the thing that I typed out in the order that I typed it out. Um, or again, if you've learned the keyboard commands for these things, uh, from this one add, you can say, you can just type these out. So to type this out, I would say uh, bracket not Q control shift C to give the conditional an X. Okay. And then on two, a direct derivation. Okay. So those are the controls for and, or, and by conditional on logic 2010.